Hi, welcome to learnhowtogarden.com. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to plant and care for blueberries. If you're not already subscribed to me at Learn How to Garden, there's a link below this film. If you input your email address onto there, it means every time we put up a new film, we can let you know. It also means you get access to our written blog posts that don't appear anywhere other than on the website. And it also lets you know what other activities we're up to here at Learn How to Garden throughout this year. Blueberries are one of the fruits I get asked about most. Um, they're very popular at the moment, they're a superfood, they're really really high in antioxidants but people get real problems with them and that's because of the very sort of um, unique conditions that blueberries like to grow in. Now this is what a blueberry bush is likely to look like when you first purchase it. It's uh, going to be grown in a pot more than likely and it's going to have none of its leaves. There are one or two varieties that are semi-evergreen but you're more than likely going to have one without leaves and the first thing you have to remember is that this needs an acidic soil that means it needs a soil that has a pH between about 4.5 to 5.5 which is much lower than most of the other fruit that we grow if you can grow camellias or rhododendrons really really well in your garden then blueberries will love it but for the majority of people they can prove a problem and it normally comes down to the pH of their soil. So for a lot of people what I suggest is that the best way to grow these is actually in a container or a pot. And what you're going to need is a decent pot. This particular plant here is going to grow to about five feet tall so it's quite a big plant. You could grow it in a 12 inch or 30 centimeter pot but what you really want is one like this. A decent 50 centimeter pot so that this plant can get to its full potential. And what we're going to do with this is the first thing, you've got a single drain hole in here and you need to crock that. Now all the crocking means is that you're going to cover that hole with some broken pot. But what you don't then do is put a layer of drainage in. It's a very old fashioned thing, you see it written in the majority of books. Uh, but drainage, all you're doing is reducing the amount of compost in here. So it's very simple. You take some broken pots just to cover the hole. And I tend to grow plants that are staying in a pot for a long time in terracotta. I think that they grow better. I think that the temperature fluctuations are far less. They get far less hot in the summer. Black pots can get very, very overheated for the roots around the edge in the summer. And we're going to need some ericaceous compost. And all that ericaceous means is an acid-loving compost. And if you live in the UK, you're fortunate enough that you can get this. This is a compost made using wool and bracken and you can see it's ericaceous, it's got ericaceous written on it and that's what you're looking for. Most ericaceous compost used to be based on peat but we're trying to use less peat now. So I'm going to empty this compost first of all out onto my tray. I've been asked quite often what these trays are and all they are are builders trays that you can buy for mixing cement. Much, much cheaper than a purpose-made one for horticulture. So get this compost out. You could plant straight into this but if you have access to some really well rotted manure and when I say really well rotted you want manure that you can put into a sieve and will sieve through so you can see that coming out of the bottom and that will give us manure like this like friable compost so you want some well rotted manure or your alternative is again some well rotted leaf mould and the reason we're adding this is that the leaf mould and the manure is absolutely full of natural mycorrhizal organisms and natural bacteria and because this plant is going to be living in this pot for a long time the better the balance we can get of soil nutrients 
the healthier the plant will be. So I now just need to mix this all together. Once it's all mixed, just start to load your plant pot. Don't force it all down. Just let it sit nice and evenly in this pot. Another trick with blueberries, when you water them, only use rainwater. A lot of us have tap water that's very alkaline and the blueberries don't like that. So rainwater for your blueberries. And once your blueberry starts to grow, from the minute the buds appear, you want to be watering it every couple of weeks. And you're going to want to feed it once a month with a weak feed. Again, we need to look for a feed that says ericaceous feed. You can get an ericaceous seaweed feed, which is fantastic. Once you get roughly to within about four or five inches of the surface, put your blueberry in, still in its pot. Then keep taking your ericaceous mix and we go all the way round. Once we've gone all the way around, gently firm down. Take the blueberry out, invert it, tap it, and out it should come. Pop it into the hole that's perfect for it. Top off to the same level as it was growing in the pot. And water it in. If you're going to grow in terracotta pots like this, go to the expense of buying one that's frost proof. Otherwise you'll find that if they freeze, the water in the terracotta expands and the pot cracks. And the reason they're much more expensive is that they have to be fired twice in the kiln rather than once. That's why they cost a lot more. And that, quite simply, is how to plant a blueberry in a pot. It would be exactly the same if you are doing it in the ground if you had acidic soil. Now it will tell you everywhere that blueberries are self-fertile and they are. If we just had this one we would get a crop but if you have two different varieties you'll get more than double the crop off both of them because they will cross-pollinate which is much much better. They're fairly trouble free as plants go. I have very little trouble. Occasionally we get green fly, but not very often. The biggest problem with blueberries are birds. Birds will take the blueberries just before you're ready to eat them. So you do need to net them once the berries are swelling. You can get pink blueberries, which sounds like a uh, contradiction in terms. And some people say that they are less susceptible to bird attack. Um, I haven't grown the pink ones, I tend to grow just the blue blueberries. Brilliant for juice, brilliant to use in sorbets in the summer. Uh, if you're growing it in a pot, even in the smallest garden, it means you can have fruit and move it anywhere you want. If you grow it in a 12 inch pot, what you'll actually do, because the roots are constrained, you'll have a smaller plant. For the first couple of years, you don't really need to prune it. After that, it's very much um, a case of removing about a third of the old wood just to keep new wood generating and new plants. Um, new plants, new wood generating, uh, and on that new wood you get more buds and more fruit. So that's it, planting blueberries. It's to do with the pH of your soil. If you don't know what the pH of your soil is, invest in a pH testing kit. It needs to be acidic between 4.5 and 5.5. Rainwater, ericaceous feed. It's all to do with the pH of the soil and the pH you're keeping it at. If you can do that, your blueberry will be trouble free and really happy. Thanks a lot for watching Learn How to Garden.